After a long few months of galaxy season, those of you in the Northern Hemisphere are likely rejoicing with the return of the Milky Way core and nebula season. But for those of us south of the equator, nebula season never stops. Guys, it's been a while since I've had a chance to sit down and edit a video, and tonight I'm coming to you on a clear, moonless Saturday night from a hotel room in a border laid zone with none of my gear. It's a good thing I like my job. But anyway, the South. The hemisphere that never sleeps. Because we're all too busy taking photos all night. Every shot in this video was taken with the exact same setup, the home rig I presented in my 2022 setups video. Be sure to check out that link if you haven't already. The main highlights of that rig are the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro mount and EVOSTAR 72 ED telescope. And the photos are taken with a ZWO ASI 294MC Pro cooled astronomy camera. I use the ASI Air Plus to control everything. Additionally, I use the ZWO Duo Band light pollution filter to help make the nebulae pop against the my Bortle 5 background skies. The southern sky is filled with stunning nebulas, starting with the return of Orion in November and extending all the way through until the end of Milky Way core season in late September, early October. The hits just keep on coming virtually all year. In this video, we're exploring four of the largest and arguably most stunning Southern Hemisphere targets out there. Extending from Norma to the Great Carina region, they all lie between 48 and 63 degrees south of the celestial equator, making them all firmly Southern Hemisphere exclusives. The first stop on this tour is the famous, ferocious Fighting Dragons of Ara, which are actually more in the constellation of Norma. Usually seen photographed in narrowband, this one presented quite a challenge to bring out all of the features. The story goes that the two dragons are fighting over the precious egg at the bottom of the image. In reality, that egg is the remnants of a massive supernova, and the shockwave from this ancient explosion can clearly be seen interacting with the gases of the main nebula. I especially love this image stylus, which draws your attention to the finer details of the shockwave and the dragons. From there we jump across the Pointers, Colsac Nebula, and the Southern Cross to Centaurus and the Carina region. This region of the sky is rivaled only by Orion and possibly the Rho of Yuji slash Scorpius region for the density of stunning nebulosity that can be found here. Moving from east to west we begin with yet another winged creature, this time the Running Chicken Nebula. This is the nebula that I had the lowest expectations for, but probably had one of the best results. It's a name that I've never understood until I shot it for myself. The head, neck, and belly of the chicken reveal themselves in a stunning way. Before we get to the last two targets, I just want to share a couple of updates with you. Number one, we've actually gone ahead and installed an outdoor PowerPoint specifically for the telescope, which is really awesome. It means I don't have to use that battery anymore. I can run everything all night long without any worry of things dying uh, or power consumption from the dew heaters and all that. Uh, so that's been a really good upgrade. Number two is that I've just recently joined my astronomy club, which is uh, really exciting. It's something I've wanted to do for a while uh, and even more exciting than that. In uh, three weeks from now, we are going to be going to a Bortle 1 site for three nights in the next new moon. So make sure you stay tuned to see how that all pans out. Alrighty, let's get back to it. Next, we move to the popular target of the Statue of Liberty and Southern Tadpoles Nebulae. Though I have to strongly agree with Dylan that this thing really needs to be renamed to the Breakfast Club Nebula. 
Firstly, I mean, come on, look at it. Secondly, how can we be naming this after something that's in the Northern Hemisphere? You can't even see this from the Statue of Liberty. Now a little more focal length would have been best to fully capture the stunning detail of Lady Liberty slash Judd Nelson, but still, it's a great result. Before we get to the final shot, I thought I'd throw in a bonus image that I took over the last few months. At only 10 degrees south of the equator, this is a well-known target to pretty much everyone around the world, but I felt it was relevant here given the fact that it is still visible for several hours after sunset at this time of year from Sydney. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's long gone from view at sunset given the combination of its slightly southern position and the shorter summer nights that you're experiencing. This is the Seagull Nebula. Lastly, you guessed it. It's everyone's favorite, the big cheese, the crown jewel of the south, the great Carina Nebula. Are there any other Carcassonne fans out there? To me, all I ever see in Carina is a giant red meeple. Anyone else? Not much else can be said about Carina that hasn't been said a thousand times before. So with that, thanks again for your support. Keep on looking up and uh, keep on seeing things in your own way. <laughs>